All right, hey everybody. It is Sunday afternoon. Um, we're gonna go ahead and stitch up the bottle bands. Um, pardon me, I'm like fresh out of the shower and kind of a hot mess this morning or this afternoon weather. I don't know what time of the day it is anymore. Um, so we're gonna get through this together. Um, it's pretty easy actually once you see how they go together. I'm off the camera here. Uh, they can be made in a four by four hoop. Um, it'll be two hoopings. I'm gonna attempt in the second part of this video to show you how to do it all in one hoop if you have a bigger hoop which I haven't actually tried yet, but in my head it'll work. So either it's gonna work or you can laugh at me. Either way, it's gonna be fine. Hi, Jenny, hi, Jody. Uh, so with this, you're gonna have two hoopings. Um, and I just realized that I didn't have a smaller hoop. So I just ordered a four by four hoop for my machine because otherwise you're gonna go through a lot of stabilizer <laughs> uh, if you have a bigger hoop for this. So um, that is coming for me to make my life easier. Um, but to do this, you are gonna need a water bottle of some sort. Uh, this is a, I want to say this is 30 ounces. And so far the ones that I've made have all with the measurements have all been around 10 inches in circumference, like more or less. So, um, this one was made on a slightly different one, but it still fits if you can see. Um, so it's got a little snap here that snaps off and on, but you don't really need it. It's more or less just to help you secure the elastic. So you're not trying to like stretch it. Um, otherwise, if you made it without the snaps and for asking, you'd have this on the hoop and you'd have to take this tiny piece of elastic and get it like out of the way and stretch to stitch, which would make you hate your life. So this is kind of the easier way to do it. Um, and it gives you a chance to use like any fun snaps that you have or any like fun contrasting, um, vinyl if you want to on this. So to start, the first thing you're going to need to do is measure your water bottle, what the circumference. So... Like I said, I measured this earlier, and these 30-ounce bottles are all around 10 inches in circumference, but just go ahead and double-check. Um, grab a bottle size that you're going to want to use um, just to make sure. And yeah, this is about 10 inches, give or take a little bit, so that's the size we're going to go with. So the width of these are about 4 inches, um, so you're going to want to cut your fold-over elastic to the size of some your water bottle minus the width of your design which says four inches so i've got a six inch piece here um so we're going to go with that and the first thing you're going to do is you are going to actually stitch out that little tab part hi Jeannie. hi maydell um so this is our first step here so in one hoop regardless of your machine size Go ahead and load that up on your machine, that little tab portion. It'll be hoop one and all the files, it'll say hoop one, I think. So go ahead and put that down and you're gonna run it, like pretty much any snap tab or anything. You're gonna do your placement first. I have to edit that. Yeah, we're embroidering. Wasting lots of stabilizer. Um, I can't wait for my other smaller hoop to get here, so I won't waste as much, but. So the first step we're stitching right on the stabilizer. Hi, Nikki, hi, Debbie. This is our step one. It is right on the stabilizer. So that's the outline that we're gonna be using. Now the next step is to take your piece of fold over elastic that you have, and you're gonna actually put this, if you can see, kind of almost to the very edge of this, centered in that tab, if you can see. So that's where your fold over elastic goes. You're gonna wanna put this right side up. So if you're using like fancy elastic, you're gonna want the, um, you're gonna want the fancy side to be facing up, okay? So it's gonna look like that. We're gonna go ahead and tape that in place. And I did this, I did a video of this for my testers last week um, so they could see how it goes together first because they were testing them. And <laughs> I didn't mess up once on it. So when I did that video, but you know how my videos go here. So it means I'm gonna mess up everything here and that's, all right. So now you can see it's taped down like that. All right, hi Paula. We're going to slide that back in our machine. And what the next step is going to do, it's going to tack down that elastic for us. So it starts on the top and then it moves down to the right and it goes down and it stitches down that elastic and force nice and neat so we can go to the next step. Right. So it looks like this now. All right, so our elastic is stitched down now in that little box that we did. 
So the very last step of this, we're actually gonna put the front and the back on at the same time. So we had, I think I put one inch, one and a half inch by one and a half inch for this, the tab size. So that's kind of the minimum you can use on that. So make sure you have at least that size cut out and you're gonna make sure that you place your backing over your placement stitches to cover that all up. I'm using felt. I like to use felt on the back of things, one, because it's cheaper than vinyl, um, and two, because it doesn't get drugged there. Sometimes vinyl will get stuck on you and you have to put stuff down, but felt seems to be my go-to for that because it's easier to work with. All right, so I have my backing over those placement stitches, and now I'm gonna do the same thing on the front with my vinyl that I have cut out. So my vinyl square, I'm gonna put this, and this is way bigger than I need, but it's fine. I'm gonna put this down and secure that in place. So now we have this, and I'm gonna pop that back into my machine. And it's going to do the, pop back there. Nope, I'm good. All right, so the next step is going to now, it's gonna finish the tab for you. So pop it in, run that last step. Hi, Cindy. This is actually a pretty, like, once you get it down, like, this would be a pretty good beginner project, too. It's not as complicated as it looks, so don't be intimidated by it. So the tab part's done. That's it. That's the tab. So we're going to go ahead and unhoop this. And we're going to go ahead and cut out the tab. I'm going to use, actually, my applique scissors for this because that's a little smaller of an area. So go ahead and take all your tape off. Trim up any loose threads that you have. Allergies are killing me today. All right. All right, so I'm gonna pull all the stabilizer out. I use tear away for this. You could use cut away too, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, it just makes it a little easier. She's not gonna cut so many layers, but it totally works for cut away too. So here's where we're at. And now I'm just gonna trim, being super careful that I don't cut this elastic. So what I like to do, if you can see, is I like to kind of pull down the elastic out of the way. And then when I go to the front, I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna cut this top part first here, just to make sure that I'm not gonna cut this elastic. Okay, so I'm gonna use my applique scissors. I'm just gonna cut down that straight line. Yeah, it's more or less straight. I can't seem to cut straight on camera. I don't know what it is. I look like I'm like a drunken elephant trying to cut on camera. All right, tear on your remaining stabilizer out there. So here's the front side with my excess stabilizer. I didn't pull it very well. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the back side here. I'm just gonna pull this out of the way, the elastic out of the way, and I'm just gonna trim right across that line there at the top, if you can see. So again, I like to use my applique scissors here for this versus my big shears, just because I have a little more control in there. So I'm not gonna be cutting into that elastic because that's probably the most like nerve wracking part. All right, so now this, and now we can just take whatever scissors and just cut around the remaining three sides, which my scissors are way over there. So applique it is. My very not neat cutting job, but we got the job done. So this is our tab, all right, front and back. And there is a placement hole right there for the snap. Would you use Ollie Fun? Yeah, you could use Ollie Fun in the back. Um, I just like felt because I find it to be cheaper. Um, I've only got Ollie Fun a couple of times and I didn't really compare some price, but you could totally use felt. You can still use vinyl on the back too or cork. I just like the cheaper options. It still really sees the backside. 
So this is it. We're gonna go ahead and set this aside for now. Um, go ahead and just double check your measurement for this, depending on how you placed your elastic in the tab part, make sure it's still not above your six inches. So go ahead and grab, go ahead and grab your measuring tape just to double check. And I, I'm slightly bit over, so I'm gonna take a little bit off. It's better with these to actually be a little shorter since it's elastic. Um, you don't want it to be very loose. I mean, you're gonna err on the side of caution on cutting it too short because it'll stretch. If you have it too loose on there, it's gonna slide down. So go ahead and just take off as much as you feel you need to. They're pretty forgiving. Like I said, take off more than you think versus too little. So our tab, and we're gonna move on to the next hooping, which is the actual band thing. I don't wanna go, I wanna erase this so I can go to the next thing. Yeah, erase. All right. And let's see. All right, so I'm gonna do my, I'll take an accurate, oh good, it's not applique. It'll take forever to do an applique on here. All right, so I'm gonna load the second hooping. I'm gonna do the hexy one for this one. So, oh, two ninety nine for six. Yeah, that is a good price then for the Ollie Fund. That probably is cheaper than felt. Um, I just, Someone brought it up for notebook covers, and so I, I got some, and I liked it. Um, I learned that you can't iron it, but uh, I didn't even think about it. But, yeah, I mean, either way would absolutely work. Ollie Fun felt whatever. Sorry, let me hoop my stabilizer in the next tube. I'll be right back. So I have hooped stuff for my second hoop. We are in business. I'm going to pop that on. And the first step of this um, is going to be the placement for our vinyl. So go ahead and stitch that right on your stabilizer. And using what I hope is a decent enough contrasting thread that you can see everything. the applique ones that I've listed so far they also have a blank version too so it can keep your stitch count down if you're like making production sewing or if you want to like add a name or something in the middle it gives you a little more room that you can do that without adding a ton of stitches so on placement hi Lori yeah I'm home I drove we drove home last night Lexington's only like an hour and a half from us so we went down for the concert and then came right home so from here um, we are going to go ahead and plop our vinyl right over that, making sure that we're covering up all those stitches on our stabilizer. All right, so pop that down. And then with any of these, like the number of steps you have next depends on the design. So this one's pretty simple. I think it's just, it's one step here, but if you're doing like a sports one like the baseball one the volleyball you'll have a different number of steps there so this is just do all the steps that you would have for the design portion of it before continuing on to the next so I'm going to stitch up the design portion now for this which is just a line the design portion so 
once you finish that for any of the bottle bands you make, you're gonna go into this next step. So this is gonna, this is where we're at, our design. It's just one line on this one. Um, we're gonna, it's gonna stitch down the placement for us for where we're gonna kind of center our tab here. Let's see, so let's go ahead and put that down. It's gonna show us where to put it. Here is where we are. If you can see, there's a little line over here that's just showing us kind of where we're going to put it on the back. Looks like this. Let me turn up some of those threads there. I don't know why it bothers me to have like loose stray threads, but it does. All right. So now we're going to flip it over and working from the back side of the hoop. Uh, Maydell, the elastic on mine, so you need to measure the circumference of your water bottle. Mine was 10 inches. Um, so I initially cut it to six and then made it. And then once I added the tab, um, I cut it down a little bit more. So it's around five and a half inches or so. You want to go shorter versus longer on the elastic. So it actually holds up on the bottle. So from here, we are going to lay our elastic. It's going to be going this way and it's going to be right side down because it's going to be on this side when we're done. So take your tab, um, and you're going to put it a little bit inside ish and then if you can see I'm kind of centering it right over that line that's right there so it's going to be right inside it's face down so the fancy side is going to be up on the top when we're done with it so right here okay and then I'm going to tape it in place with my masking tape Hi, Susan. Better late than never. I'm always late, so it's fine. I run late for everything. All right. So here is where we are. You can see. So it's taped a little bit inside our, that hexi right there. So it kind of catches once we add the backing to it. It's right over that one line that we can see from the front right here. So that way it's going to be even with that tab on this side. So it's centered over that. So it looks like this. And now we're going to pop it back on the hoop and that's going to tack down. I'm going to put my hoop on right. It's going to tack down that elastic for us. done all right so now here's where we are it's just tacked down that little area right there okay Gus is missing the video fan Gus is I don't know what Gus I think he's laying up in the living room watching baseball with everybody so front back now our next step here is just add our backing so grab your felt your olive on your vinyl whatever and you're gonna lay it down right over your placement stitches from step one on this. So make sure it covers up all of it. And go ahead and keep your elastic kind of just taped down too. That way it doesn't get curled under when you're stitching. So this is covering up that entire placement stitching. This is our backing. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pop that back on. Yep, we're good. Make sure that elastic is out of the way. And I'm gonna stitch down the final, the final part of this. I guess I could have changed color, so it's 
cleans out a little better, but it's fine. And we're done stitching. So front, back, we're going to go ahead and take this out and go ahead and remove all of our stabilizer. Again, I use tear away, but you can totally use cut away. It doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and pull out your stabilizer if you're using tear away. I'm doing a terrible job actually pulling this away, but okay. So what you'll see is on your elastic, there is the single kind of, you can even tell the single line of stitching, um, that's set as a single, so you can easily pull it out. So go ahead and grab a seam ripper if you need to. Otherwise it might, depending on how long your machine is set to cut jumps, where are all my seam rippers? turning into Pierre. I can't find my secret first. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just, if I need to cut out all these stitches. It should be, yep. It's real quick. They pull right out. I don't catch my elastic and my seam ripper. Then we're going to have free elastic. There we go. Go ahead and cut any loose threads. There we go. So now all the extra stitching that we did earlier is out of that elastic. So now it's nice and loose, it's nice and free. So now we need to cut this, which like the other one is probably the most nerve wracking part. So go ahead and start with the side with it's got your elastic cause that's the hardest part. Pull your backing down with your elastic and then trim across that top line here. I'm gonna grab my bigger scissors. Because this is a bigger area. So I'm kind of just watching, cut across, making sure I don't cut my elastic. Boom. Done with that side. Do the same thing on the back. Go ahead and pull this to the front so that way you can trim nice and neat across that top piece here without cutting into your elastic. Uh-huh. And that's it. All right. So there's that. Now that's the hard part. So now we just need to trim around the rest of it. Just quarter inch, eighth inch away, whatever your preferred kind of length to cut away from this is. Let's see if I can cut non-wonky wonky on camera. Probably not. Let's trim up that back where it's a little uneven here. All right. And that is it. Now all we have to do is add our snaps. So I'm going to clean up my thread tails here. So you just need one pair of cam snaps for this. So I grab mine. So you've got a placement on the tab and then a placement on the bottle band here. So make sure that when you do this, it's gonna snap like this. So you want the round part of one side of your snap on the front here. So that way, like either the male or female is on this side. And then on this side on the front, you want either the male or the female. So that way it catches and it snaps, okay? So let me go ahead and pop those in real quick. See if I can actually go straight in here with my own. 
Probably not because I'm on camera. I don't know why I still get nervous doing these. I'm probably going to stab my finger. All right, so those are in. And now I'm just going to go over my press real quick and I'm going to pop those snaps in. So give me one second. And then we're going to try the experiment of putting them all in the same hoop. Which will either work or it will be a disaster, but we'll see. In theory, in my head, it works. So again, with this, you're going to want the round part on one side to be through the backing. Okay, that way catches on this side. And then on this one, you want the flat part to be on the front. So... No, I lied to the backwards. Forget what I just said. It will work that way, but if you want your tab to lay over on this, like on this way versus being underneath, I lied. I totally lied. So put your round thing on the front of this and then your round one on the back of this. See, look, I'm already messing up. So round part on the back here. And then round part on the front here so we can attach our male and female on the other side. So give me one second to go to the press and pop these on real quick. All right, one. Two. Okay. All right. So that's it. That is the bottle band, and this is the water bottle that I measured, and right on there. So that's it. All right, so let's try the experiment if you want to stick around to see if we can pop them all in one hoop. Um, I'm going to move this, move it this way down. And then... I'm going to add the tab. It's a little experiment here because I haven't tried it yet. And we'll move that way up. Now, I didn't want you to be that close to each other. I'm going to try to level up this one. It's fine. We'll make it work. Okay, so I have them all loaded into one hoop now, and we're gonna see if we can make this work all in one hoop. So I need to stitch my tab first, which is coming off at the very end, because of course it is. All right, so I'm jumping around, I'm gonna stitch my tab first. Let me get some more stabilizer real quick. Here is where we are. So this is for the experimental part. So let's hope this works. Otherwise, just ignore everything I'm doing from here on out and rewind the video and watch from the beginning. So we're gonna attempt to see if we can get them all in one hoop. This should, it should fit in a five by seven too, I would think, but this is a six by 10 for reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same steps, but all on one hoop. Actually, I'm gonna move that way up farther. Hang on. I want to move this way up because so I'm going to cut that stabilizer. So I'm going to make sure it's way out of my way there. So I'm moving this one to the top of the hoop, the tab. Okay. All right. And I'm jumping because I have that way at the end. All 
All right, so here we go, our experiment here. So we're gonna do the same steps, but on one hoop. So I've got the tab loaded. I'm gonna stitch up my placement for the tab. Hi, Deborah. And I have my fold over elastic already cut. So it's about six inches. I'm gonna do the same steps as I did before. I'm gonna lay this right kind of in that in the center of that tab. Okay, so here we are. And I'm gonna tape that down. It's right side up. All right, pop that back in, and then it's gonna stitch on the box to tack down the elastic. It's gonna stitch along the top first. And it doesn't even need to catch it on all four sides. It's not a huge deal if it doesn't, so don't be worried if it's not catching at all. It's really just to kind of center it so it's not gonna to shift too much on you. All right, so now we just need to take it out and add our front and back to the tab, so. Here is where we are with a video on Facebook. Yeah, Jeannie, uh, the video will stay up in the events tab. So the event's going to be there forever. So as soon as you, as soon as it's finished, I'll save it there. So you can watch it anytime. All right. So I'm going to put this to my back. Go ahead and cut some of my loose threads here. Put my back down. And tape it in place, covering up all those stitches from the first step. So back, and then I'm gonna flip it to the front and I'm gonna put my other square. Same thing, I'm just gonna cover up all those placement stitches. It's way more vinyl than I needed, but. So here I am, and I'm gonna pop that in, and I'm gonna stitch down the rest of the tab. Make sure that didn't get caught. Yep, we're good. All right. Yeah, the elastic. I found a bunch of this fold over elastic on Etsy, this really cool shop. I can find it and link it um, in this event too. Like, she had so much fun elastic that I found. I got it initially for notebook covers, but then we made these, so. done with the tab. So I'm going to do my experiment now. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and I'm going to try and cut this out of the stabilizer and see if I leave enough stabilizer in there for it to go. So this will be fun. Wish me luck. I'll be right back and take this over to my cutting mat and do that. So I don't either slice my leg or slice onto my table. So I'm going to pull this masking tape off and cut this out. Wish me luck. I'll be right back. so good so my knife was super dull so that didn't work as well but I got it out so we have a giant hole in our stabilizer but the rest of our design will stitch down here so we should be okay so here's where I'm at with this we're gonna move on to the other part of this stable I moved it like really far apart in the hoop so I'm hoping there should be enough down here to work but we'll find out it's an adventure I know it could be tense right now. 
So for the instructions, I'm just recommending doing it in two hooping, but this, if this works, then we'll know it's possible to do it in one. I'll be a little messy and stressful maybe. Okay, so far so good. Uh-oh, where's my other vinyl? Oh, there it is. All right, so my stamp leaves a giant hole in it. So here's where I'm at, placement for the band. I'm just gonna lay my vinyl on top of that. Why that's stitching, I'm gonna move on to cut that tab out. Oh, that's right, the rack over there is not happy. All right, so cover up all my placement stitches. All right, so back to this little tab guy. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull out all that stabilizer as much as we can. Or if you're doing cut away, skip this part and start cutting, but. All right, so again, to cut this elastic, I'm gonna kind of pull it down on the back so that way I can cut right across that top line here without cutting into the elastic. I'm getting brave and using my big shears, so let's hope I don't cut anything. All right, good thing so far, so good. So that's where we're at. I'm gonna do the same thing to cut down along this back here, pull the elastic way far out of the way. All right, so way far out and then just cut across Top of that. All right, that's the hard part. So now just cut around those three sides. My wonky cutting today. It's fine. Trim right. all these threads. All right. So our tab two is done. All right, so now my vinyl curled up on me. I didn't tape it down. So here's where we're at. We're gonna now move on to the little placement line here. To show us where to put this little tab. on the front but now on the back we have lots of loose threads but we have a line right here that shows us where to lay down our tab um Jacqueline I am making one of the bottle bands so with this one again we're gonna want the fancy pretty side to be right and you know what I think I put my band on upside down my elastic I think it's gonna end up upside down no it's not because this is not one direction ignore me Man, I need a nap. All right, so I'm laying this centered over that little stitching line, right, and put a little bit overhanging into our little hexi here, or whatever design you're using. And go ahead and make sure that you stitch that elastic kind of far out of the way. So here is where we are. Okay, so the pretty side's facing down, because it's gonna be the front of our hoop. And I'm going to pop that back on and I'm going to tack down that part of the elastic. So I didn't think about it before, since this design doesn't have like a right side or upside or whatever, but if you are using one and you have like a name a certain way, you might want to be careful how you put your fold over elastic in the tab. Because if you have a directional fold over elastic like this one, it may end up upside down. So just be mindful of that when you're making your tab. All right, so here's where we are. It's tacked down here in the back. Our last step is just to put our backing on. So go ahead and lay your backing right over all those placement stitches and go ahead and secure that down so far our stabilizer with the hole on it's holding up so yay all right so i'm tape my elastic tab is kind of way out of the way there so it doesn't get stitched or caught up anywhere so I'll pop that back in a giant hole in the stabilizer. All right. 
And we are gonna stitch the final pass here. Uh, Julie, on the back, I'm just using, um, I'm just using felt. You could use vinyl, you could use cork, you could use Ollie Fun. Um, I like to use felt on the back of a lot of projects. One, because you don't see it. Um, it's cheaper than a lot of vinyl. And two, it doesn't have a tendency to get like stuck like some of the vinyls do on the back of things. Um, so, I mean, you can actually use vinyl on the back, but just make sure that if it starts sticking, you stick something under that between the vinyl and your machine bed so it doesn't get stuck just personal preference oh oh and see you know what should happen you should actually secure your vinyl down so that it doesn't curl up on you like mine just did but that's okay we caught it in time and we're good all right it was me being lazy and not actually taping the vinyl down that was me just slapping it on there and my end one of the curl and it almost got caught but we saved it And we're done well that part anyways so go ahead and pop that all out of your hoop pull away your stabilizer if you're using tear away and now we know we can make it all in one hoop just make sure that when you place them if you're placing the two designs in one hoop you have them really far away from each other so that way the hole that you cut doesn't interfere with the band portion Later on. All right, my tape off, clean up my threads, and we'll finish this bad boy here. So again, I'm gonna cut away those, that line of stitching, you can even see, it's just a single line of stitching here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and take our seam ripper and pull any loose threads out. Um, I think I have this on my machine is like set to tie it jumps, which is annoying for things like this. I probably could fix it, but it's fine. There we go. Cut all those stitches out, so now it's free. And now I'm gonna start at this edge where the elastic is, pull it down to the back, and then you're gonna cut across that top line here. So make sure that you don't cut that elastic. Hold your breath a little bit you need to. I usually need to. Okay, so here is this. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the back. I'm going to make sure that I pull down this elastic so it's out of the way, flip it over. And if you can see my line there, I'm going to cut it right across that top line, making sure that I'm not cutting into my elastic. Success. All right, so here's where we are. And now I'm just going to trim around the rest of it. You've cut through the elastic on a couple. Yeah, I did that too. It happens. It's a little nerve wracking. I think pulling it down helps, um, but yeah, it definitely is a risk here. All right, so I'm just cutting this out the rest of the way. My wonky stuff, my wonky cutting. When you cut out one side at a time, you can see you might have a tendency to have like one part longer in the back. Just grab applique scissors or whatever, and you can trim that down a little bit more from this side so you can see that way you don't see the backing. No big deal. There we go. Now we're nice and even. You can't see the backing on it. So from here, um, I'm going to clean up my loose threads. Looks like I got my tab already. So this is what I was talking about with the, I have like directional fold over elastic here. And if, I think it was in my hoop like this. 
if you have like a design and you're doing like if you're adding a name or something to it just be mindful of how you place that elastic in because if I had the design faced like this like say I put a name in here this would actually end up being upside down so just be mindful of that how you place that. I didn't pay attention to that um, but no big deal on this because there's no design on it that you're gonna have it be upside down so here's where I'm at I'm gonna add my snaps let's go ahead and poke a hole so I can get it centered this time and I did not double check the length of my elastic on this one so I think it's a little longer than the other one all right poked my hole all right so I want um, I'm gonna start from the tab side I'm gonna put the flat part here on the front of the tab of my snap all right so here's where I'm at with the snap here and then on this side Okay, I want the flat part to be on the back. So I'll grab my snap. Okay, and that way, when you go to snap it, the male and female are gonna meet here like this. So let me run over and put these in real quick and I'll be right back and we'll have a finished band. business all right so once you have your snaps in um go ahead and snap it and that's it you're done with your band so go ahead and slide that right around your water bottle and you are finished that's it so i hope this made it a little, a little scary um for anyone that was kind of afraid to try it like it's just it seems scarier because it's two hoopings, but the snap part is just so, because otherwise you're going to be fighting elastic trying to get it all to stretch. Um, poor Kelly, one of my testers, um, tried to make it. Um, I think Tierney did too with just the elastic on it, like the um, like the planter bands that I have. But it's such a small diameter trying to work with to get elastic in. It just was, yeah, it was not, not easy. So this is a much easier option. So um yeah i'm glad you like them julie so thanks for sharing the ones that you made in the group too they look awesome so that's it so i am gonna close this out now any questions go ahead and pop them in the comments and i'll come back and ask um jacqueline yeah i just released a baseball one i think on friday so there is a baseball one if you search on bottle bands on the website the baseball one will pop up too so yep um and tracy Awesome. I can't wait to see yours too. So everyone have a fab rest of your weekend and I will see you soon. I, our next slide will figure it out um, probably the next couple weeks. So let me know what you guys want to see. All right. See you later. Bye.